Hello everyone, Dan Herb with Dan Herb Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I am here in my winter wonderland, out in my outdoor shop right now, with the KK8 kiln and a whole lot of gold to smelt. Seems like a great thing to do on this cold winter day is do some nice warm smelting. So hopefully today we're gonna make a nice big gold bar for you to see. That's the plan. Hope it works out. Enjoy. Now before I get started, big shout out to Dave from 911 Metallurgist and Pat from Quick Kiln for supplying me with the KK8 Quick Kiln here so that I can do this smelting thing for YouTube to watch. If you want to check them out, there's links down below in the description for both of them. start warming up the kiln to drive off any moisture it might have in it because we are all outdoors here and we don't want to make sure that we don't you know shock anything with moisture boiling inside there so we're warming it up slowly and letting any moisture just sort of vaporize off at the moment let me show you what we have to smelt today now the story of this gold is that one of my viewers one of my fans uh, tried to do some smelting of his own and um, didn't necessarily do it right. Maybe made a few mistakes along the way. And I think what happened is he was trying to smelt some black sand and gold and ended up melting the two together and ended up with a material that is just, it looks like gold on the surface, but it's brittle, it breaks. It's a, a mineral, if you will, a, a mixture of black sand, gold and anything else that was in there, any other rocks that were in there that's all melted together. He contacted me and said, Dan, help! I can't get my gold back. So I said, send it off to me, I'll see what I can do. So today is a big experiment with this gold to see if we can recover the gold that is in there and get it back down to a pure form of gold. I don't know what's in the actual material completely, so it's possible that my fluxes will be wrong. We're gonna start out with a non-lethargic flux, so no lead in the flux. A non-lethargic flux that is just your simple refining flux. The exact same uh, recipe as that's on Legends. Uh, I'm gonna use the exact same quantities. We're gonna use uh, potassium nitrate in it to make sure any of the metals are completely oxidized. We're gonna have silica and borax to capture up those oxidized metals. And some sodium carbonate in there to do, make sure the pHs are all right and it does all the right stuff. We're gonna start with that and see if we can actually recover the gold with that recipe. After that, if that doesn't work, we'll have to go to a lethargic flux, which means we'll need to compel it afterwards. A lot more work at that point. I've got the kiln over here just warming up nicely. Crucible inside. Nice and warm. Oh, it's about minus one degree. It's just below freezing right now outside here. Uh, so being around a nice warm kiln is very nice. We will start off with just a small sample of this gold and uh, see how it works with the flux that we're mixing up. We don't want to use the whole chunk of it to start with in case we are wrong. It is quite important that you don't use large chunks of things, that it's powders going in. So, and that's so that the flux can really make sort of intimate contact with every particle that's in there and do its chemistry right. I am going to put this chunk into a mortar pestle here and see if I can crush it up to powder it. It does look brittle, the way it's broken looks brittle, so I think I can actually break it up into small pieces. Let's see. And sure enough, it just powdered up nicely as I crunched it. It was definitely mixed with too many other minerals. It was not pure enough gold at all to hold its metallic form, so it crunched up nicely. 
Now the flux I'm going to be using for today's smelt, uh, I'm taking the recipe directly off Legend's site, so a, a flux manufacturer. And it's going to use borax, silica, sodium carbonate, and potassium nitrate uh, in the exact same ratios they tell me on the Legend site. I was thinking in this video of explaining what each component in flux actually does in the chemical reaction for a smelt, but I decided that might be a little bit too technical for this video. If you'd like to see that in one of my videos, let me know in the comments below. If I get enough people saying they want to know what each component in flux does in a smelt, I will do a video on that. If it's too technical and you don't want to learn about that, I won't waste your time. Anyhow, let's start mixing this up. First, I need 1.3 grams of silica. Next, we need 9.3 grams of borax. We need 1.3 sodium carbonate. Zero this again. 1.3 of sodium carbonate. And three grams of potassium nitrate. There is the flux I'm going to use for this small melt. It's a small amount of flux because it's just a small amount of gold I have in there. We will mix this up with the gold really nicely. mixing up and pouring all the flux and gold and everything into the crucible in there. Uh, looks like my camera wasn't turned on. Brilliant. Uh, anyhow, we now have the uh, flux and the gold all mixed together really well in the crucible inside the kiln and it's heating up slowly at this point. A little bit of technicals here when it comes to smelting. Uh, we have to bring the whole kiln, everything in the kiln, up to 900 degrees. 900 is important because that's when the chemistry starts working in there. Bring it up to 900, leave it for 20 minutes, and let some of the fusion, the, the chemical reactions that happen, occur at that lower 900 degree temperature. We then bring it up to a thousand degrees and leave it for another 20 minutes and what that does is it makes everything a whole lot more fluid, lets all the gold that has now sort of done its chemical reactions and is just sort of up in that flux gets more fluid, that gold sinks to the bottom and pools in the bottom of the crucible. 20 minutes at a thousand degrees Celsius and then we can pour it out into one of our molds. We will be using a conical shaped mold and why we use a conical shaped mold is it brings all the heavies, the gold, silver, anything that's melted in there, right into the very bottom of the cone, into a little button in the bottom, and lets the flux sit on top and harden on top. And they should come out as two separate layers, the gold and then the flux that break apart. Now, the problem with this material before is the chemistry didn't happen completely, the black sand melted into the gold, some of the flux probably melted into the gold, and when it went into its mold, they stayed together. They didn't separate gold versus the crap. So hopefully today, in our little experiment, in the conical mold, they'll separate out nicely and we'll have a pure gold button. Let's hope. a little bit about safety that you might not see on camera too much here just because I do take it off when I'm filming but I will be wearing a respirator when needed when I'm uh, breathing fumes or too close to the fumes definitely have leather gloves for handling the hot material and of course eye protection to protect my eyes from a splatter now you know I know get ready put the comments out there protecting my beard yes I am very careful with my beard and that flame and I do tuck it in when I need to um, but uh, I don't have you know a leather apron for my beard or anything like that. But yes, I am following safety precautions here to keep myself safe while doing this smelting. And I am outdoors, so the fumes are escaping quite easily. I don't have to worry about them building up too much. For all those of you who love to comment about my safety and stuff, 
remember, I'm a shop teacher. I have a four-year degree on safety, basically how to keep safe in industrial situations. And a lot of it was to do with um, not smelting necessarily, but um, foundry stuff. I know how to work with molten metals. I know the safety precautions involved. So I, I am being safe here. You might just not see everything on video. And I can't find my full face shield here. It's somewhere. I just don't know where it went to. Now, while the first little piece is smelting away over there, I'm going to weigh up the gold, the remaining gold here. It comes out to 51.6 grams. And I want to see what it comes out to afterwards, to see how much of that weight was not gold. As long as the smelt turns out, we should find out how much, you know, black sand and other things were melted in with that gold. So 51.5 and we'll see what it comes down to. I'll keep the little bead that I'm doing right now separate so it doesn't mess up the uh, measurements. I forgot to weigh it before I started. So it looks like we're at the 900 now, or pretty darn close to it. I'm gonna start my 20 minute timer and go from there. 20 minutes at 900. I'll have to turn down the propane a little bit, otherwise it will climb over the 900. Because we want to hold it there for 20 minutes. That is something else the gentleman that smelted this originally may have done. He may have just brought it to the molten point and then cast it. It has to stay there for quite some time for all the chemistry, all the smelting to actually occur in there. So 20 minutes at this, then we crank her up look inside so I don't have to put my face over the flame I have a mirror and the mirror can help me look down inside to see what's going on except it's fogging up hmm it's a little moist out here you moist definitely molten in the bottom there I can see that now this is interesting. I see what looks to be a sulfur buildup around the top ring here where the exhaust is coming out, which might mean he was smelting sulfides as well as gold, not just black sand. Black sand is an oxide, a sulfide is like a pyrite, and if that's the case, those are much more difficult to smelt. Now luckily there's potassium nitrate in there which will actually uh, deal with the sulfides if they're there, but I see this buildup around the top ring which might mean that they're present in that chunk of gold material that he gave me. Well, there we are, 20 minutes at 900 degrees. We're gonna turn up, oops, turn up. Bring it up to 1,000. That's where the whole piece of tape is on the scale, 1,000 degrees. We'll leave it there for 20 minutes. mold on top here to have it uh, heating up so that when we go uh, to pour into the mold it's warm and doesn't get shocked and doesn't cool off the gold really quickly.
it. Let's push that in. A little bit of flux on the edge, no gold. But when the gold went in, I saw the perfect bead, uh, or I saw molten metal drip in before the flux went on top. So we're gonna let that cool for a second, but I think we got her. Okay, let's dump this out and see what she looks like. Punk. Look at the gold. So that's what I want to see. Woo, she's hot through the gloves. I want to see some nice metallic gold on the bottom there. Let's get a nice close up of this while it's uh, cooling. And that's what I want to see. Nice metallic gold on the bottom. Nice separation with the flux. I could have poured a bit better. It's not the greatest pour around, but hey, we'll get better as we get a bit more practice here today. That looks great. I'm gonna give that a second to cool off a bit more before I try to separate the flux from the gold and see what it looks like. Perfect. I can tell right now, just by the look of the surface of that gold, that it's a good metallic gold. Could have done a better job of pouring it, but we've changed that mineral, that material that he created, back into raw gold. I'll knock off all that extra flux, I'll put it into a crucible and hit it hard once to make sure that it doesn't shatter on me, but that looks good. So I put it in my mortar and pestle and hit it hard once and it just deformed like gold should. We have nice metallic gold there. There is still some up in the fluxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save all this. I'm going to melt it all one more time at the end so I can pour one really nice gold bar out of it all. And we'll just use that same flux as its protective coating and it will get all the gold out of it. It'll be good. It'll be good. So here's the prill from the first go around. It's not a nice real clean one. I didn't do a great job of pouring it, but I will clean that up. You'll see that it is all beautiful gold. It's nice and metallic. You can see where I hit it really hard and it flattened it out. Um, and this will be a combination of gold, silver, and some other sort of non-ferrous metals, but mostly gold in there, I'm pretty sure. Ah! And let's see what it weighs. This one was six grams of gold. There was a bit more in there uh, that I didn't actually get that was just trapped up in the flux, but we'll get that out when I redo it. But there is six grams of gold in the first prill. Now this gentleman sent me a few other things too. This is all the flux that was left on top of his original smelt that went bad. And I will melt that down and see if any gold got trapped up in that flux. He also had a crucible break on him. A uh, broken crucible, a cracked crucible from the same gold slag and gold number one. Uh, so I'm gonna see what I have to do to this to recover anything that might be in it. I may have to crush this down nicely and like even pan it out to get the heavies out of it. Um, because I don't know if I can really smelt the broken up crucible very well. But uh, those will be other runs I do here. Today is just going to be about get recovering the gold in the big chunks of gold he had there. And I don't know how long this video will end up being. I may have to split it into two parts. If I do split it into two parts, uh, I will try to release them on the same day, maybe a few hours apart. Uh, I try to keep all of my videos less than 20 minutes, so if this goes over 20, I'll split it off into two. 